Good day, Shawnee Mission friends and those of you out there out on the interwebs. Today, what I want to walk us through is a powerful new tool uh, that has come to us quite unexpectedly uh, that is designed to help us manage uh, a very real set of problems that we've been encountering uh, with devices and the use of technology in appropriate ways uh, in our classrooms. We know that the technology the students have in their hands is quite powerful and literally opens up and unlocks the world of knowledge to them, but we also know that it is a distraction in many cases. So the district has provided us with a resource in the Manager app, which allows teachers to more effectively monitor and in some cases control what uh, resources students are able to access and use while on our network, but most importantly while in our classes. So you may know the Manager app as a place to get our apps that are approved by the district and put them onto our machines and our student machines, but uh, a surprise gift to us uh, is on the teacher side of Manager, we now have the ability to manage the devices that are in front of us uh, and use them in appropriate in the most appropriate ways uh, and help students understand how to use them. You know, uh, an education leader in Kansas named Kevin Honeycutt makes, a very, makes this point very, very clear that students in today's classrooms uh, in many ways are playing on a digital playground and no one is on recess duty. Well, it's our chance to be on recess duty and help them manage some of these uh, temptations, but also manage the use of these devices in the most appropriate way. So we're going to start this process by exploring that manager app for teachers in classrooms. Uh, I am lucky enough to have a classroom uh, within this app, so I see this from exactly where you're seeing it as a teacher, uh, and I want to walk us through some of those pieces. So when you start the manager app, you're going to come up with uh, this particular screen and you'll notice that my IB theory of knowledge class is here with its 20 students uh, and this will be where you navigate in many cases you're gonna have a lot more classes uh, you will probably see both semester one and semester two classes so in order for this to work you're gonna have to identify which ones uh, are your semester one classes and which ones are each hour now that is a little bit of an issue within manager uh, that we have already made suggestions to the Mozile company uh, to see if we can get changed. But this is all rostered from uh, Skyward, uh, and this does give us a chance to see our students that are in front of us during those hours that they are there. So we're going to go through this as an example. I'm going to start my class, uh, or get to my class, I should say, and here you have a number of different menu options. But the very first one starts off with the tabs. If we are in a one-to-one -one environment where students have iPads, like in the middle schools, we would be managing those iPads through the iOS. But instead, at the high school level, we are managing their MacBooks, and so we're gonna click the tab that says Manage Mac on the right-hand side. And you can now see those students that are listed in your roster for that, for that class. Uh, and there's a number of things that we can do. As an example, there's the class feed, which is essentially a chat board during class. So as students are working and their devices are active in our monitoring process, you can have a small discussion or a back channel for questions. Uh, but most of the work that we're going to be doing is under class. Uh, there is a, a way for you to uh, list approved apps to be used. That's a little bit harder on a MacBook because a lot of the work isn't done on apps. A lot of our work is really done uh, in web-based scenarios. So that will put us to study sites. And study sites is a little bit something that we're trying to still work out, but essentially the way it would work is you would list those sites that are approved for use in your classroom. And uh, if you put five sites up there to be used, then those should be, in theory, the only sites that students are able to access. I will point out that if you get to, if you use Google as an example, as an approved site, and then they can search in Google, and then whatever is in that domain of Google, when they click on it, they're going to be able to get out uh, of that Google domain. So it's a little bit harder uh, for us to use that app or that study sites uh, feature. But 
Some of the features that we will use quite consistently are the heads up feature uh, and, and the quick poll and some of the live stream features. So it all begins when you start a class. You can uh, hide those apps that are not listed on study apps or you can apply your study sites to that class. Pick the duration you want that class to be and then we're going to start class. So even though I don't have my IB Theory of Knowledge kids in front of me, I'm starting a class at this point uh, for them. Uh, and these are the students that are in class. So you can see in our little status uh, that these are the students that are in class. You'll notice this push pending means that they have to update their manager app. In order for this to be fully functional, they have to have that updated manager app on their device. Otherwise, we will not be able to manage, pun intended, their device uh, during our class. So it's important that you go to those students and say, make sure this is updated. But here you can see their status, whether, they're not, whether or not they're on the network. Uh, this timeline feature allows you to see what's happening on their computers during the class. As an example, this student uh, is using Google Chrome since the time we started. Uh, and as they change and use different apps, we can take a look. You can also take a live screen or take a look at a live screenshot by clicking their screen and we can see that uh, this student is studying um, muscles, uh, or, uh, is studying anatomy and the regions of the body. Uh, and so we can start to see those, uh, those pieces. You can also have this as a live screen uh, for all of them, where you can now see all of the students and what they're doing in class. So if you've turned them over to uh, an online assignment or some research or a piece that they need to be doing, now you can monitor their screenshots and monitor their screens and you can then, as we just saw, you can click on a screen and it will bring up a larger version of that so you can monitor what's happening. And then the, these little icons down here are important. If we want to take a screenshot and we're like, you know, this is, I need to have a conversation with this student about this, we can take a screenshot and it will save it to our profile uh, in Manager for us to go back to later and you can have that conversation with students. You'll notice I did take a screenshot and that screenshot will show up here uh, for us to reference uh, later on in that conversation with students. So there's a little bit of a lag time in terms of that upload, but it will keep track of that session uh, and what we are doing uh, during that class. Now, I'm gonna show you some of the other pieces that go along with this, but I do need to end the class so that I don't uh, take hold of any of their devices uh, that we've been using. But if we take a look at SafeTest, there is a way to use SafeTest. Uh, and you would essentially create a, uh, a website. You would put a URL or the website that you want students to go to to take the SafeTest. Uh, and then they would be locked into that browser and then locked into that particular web address. Now, it is not perfect, I will admit that, and, but I will tell you that uh, there are ways that we can build our assessments to make it as functional as necessary. The students are allowed on Macs to take screenshots, and of course we know that's a problem in a lot of different ways, um, but uh, this is a way for us to be able to use the screenshots and use these pieces, pardon my phone ringing, and it will allow us, even though they can take screenshots, to maybe look at our assessments and how we use those assessments. So uh, we can use the safe test function that way. I'd say it probably answers 95% of our uh, safe test needs in this case. Uh, there is an app lock feature, uh, and again, uh, you can lock devices to a single app uh, or one of the study apps that we've chosen. Uh, and I also like this quick poll feature where you can apply a quick poll to students and you can uh, create a multiple choice question or you can create a, um, a short answer question that all students will be able to answer. Uh, and it's a great formative assessment tool to use in the process uh, of class. Uh, the last part that I want to show you is the heads up feature and this heads up feature will allow you to beam out to all of the computers that are in your classroom in your digital class here 
uh, a chalkboard that says heads up uh, and it essentially locks their screen maybe you can you can customize it and say you know check in question pause it all beams out to the, the students computers and they freak out because you've taken control of their device uh, and now you can have a discussion check in with them in their process I've used this in class already and I can tell you it works amazingly a little bit of a delay but you can uh, use this as a way to check in and force that check-in process with your students in your class so when we look at all of these features there's a lot and there's a lot that I'm going to bring out in the coming days in terms of tutorials and uh, you know, one-page tutorials that you can look at and use but for those of you that want to dive in it's really user-friendly we just got to make sure that the right class is selected and that the students are there and let's play around with it and let's see if you want more information you can click the open training center down on the lower left hand corner of the manager and you will be taken to their tutorials uh, and right at the beginning there's about a nine ten minute uh, video tutorial that talks about this process but uh, gives you a little bit of information and then throughout the tutorial uh, there are uh, there's more information uh, for us to take a look at in terms of the manager app. Uh, I really do hope that this uh, revolutionizes and changes the way we use our uh, devices in our classes and I will tell you it really does begin to more fully address those concerns that we brought together last year in the classroom management committee discussions uh, and I am here to help you. Uh, if you ever do have any questions, please let me know. And I look forward to supporting you as we monitor that digital playground and that digital recess um, in our classrooms. Let's get started and let's use this tool to its highest potential in order to create learning communities in our classrooms.